When you live in a world of plenty, in a wealthy country on this planet, it's easy to take nutrition for granted. Uh, from granola bars or cases of vegetables and meats in the grocery store, our problem is often overconsumption and not nutritional inadequacies. But that's not the case around the world. Even in wealthy countries, food insecurity is a problem for far too many people. And globally, hundreds of millions of people live with either not enough calories or not enough nutritional supply to lead a healthy um, life. So in this video, we're going to look at actually what the human body needs to survive and why it really is a challenge to provide um, nutritionally sufficient food supplies to people in so many parts of the world. There are three things that we'll cover in this video. We'll start with the basic look at what we need to survive and how many calories are needed to get through an average day. We'll then look at some of the common areas of excess and deficit in particular parts of our diet in both wealthy countries and in the poorer parts of the world. We'll then finish up talking about how we obtain a balanced diet given the challenges that are common around the world. We start with calories because this is the most fundamental constraint on human survival. A calorie is a measure of the energy content of food, and our bodies have evolved to convert the energy in food into molecular forms of energy that are used in our cells to support all of our basic bodily functions. There are three broad categories of molecules that are present in food, and these include proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. All three are essential to a balanced diet, and they have somewhat different caloric contents. The amount of calories you need each day depends on your age, your activity level, and your gender. On average, men need more calories than women, and the very young and the older need fewer cal calories than those in the 19 to 30 age group. On the graph, you see an estimated daily calorie need for a sedentary lifestyle, a moderately active lifestyle, and an active lifestyle for the 19 to 30 age group. An active lifestyle here is defined as the equivalent of walking four miles a day. For anyone engaged in, say, like heavy physical labor or intense athletic training, daily caloric demands can exceed 4,000 calories. On average, a normal person needs somewhere between 2,200 and 2,700 calories per day. If we look at calorie consumption around the world, we see some massive differences across countries and income groups. In practically every country on the planet, average caloric consumption has increased from 1960 to the present. As you can see in the middle blue line, the world average is now approaching 2,800 calories per day. In the world's poorest countries, caloric consumption is approaching 2,300 calories per day. And in the wealthiest countries like the United States, calorie consumption is well over 3,500 calories per day and pushing toward 4,000. This rising calorie consumption is the underlying cause of the global obesity problem. And it's occurring at the same time as there are ongoing problems in undernutrition, which is the inadequate consumption of calories to survive, and also a major cause of stunting and wasting disease, especially in children. So we live in a world that is very split in terms of caloric consumption. Calories are one thing, but the real complexity in nutrition lies in the diversity of materials that we need to consume each day to support our bodily functions. These include both inorganic and organic nutrients that take many different forms. The inorganic nutrients include water and a range of minerals such as iron that are needed in various biochemical reactions that occur in our body. The organic nutrients include the organic molecules present in carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, as well as the organic molecules known as vitamins that are needed for specific parts of how our bodies function. Here we take a look at protein which is supposed to make up about 10 to 20 percent of our total caloric consumption each day. So if we consume 2,000 calories in a day, that would mean about 200 to 400 calories from protein. And if there are four calories per gram of protein, then we'd be estimating that we'd be needing about 50 to 100 grams of protein per day. In fact, the U.S. recommended daily allowance is about 57 grams of protein. So how much is this? There are about seven grams of protein in an egg, so you'd need to eat about eight eggs per day to meet your daily protein requirement. This protein bar in the photo contains 210 calories and about 12 grams of protein, which is 21% of your daily recommended allowance. The reality is that in high-income countries, protein consumption is very rarely an issue, even in places where there's food insecurity. Most Americans consume far more protein than they actually need, and we have ample access to meats and other forms of high-quality plant proteins. However, in low-income countries, protein access is a common issue and a major source of food-related health problems. 
Part of the reason that protein is a problem in the food supply globally is because it's not just any protein that we need. We need, in fact, a specific molecular mix of the amino acids that are the building blocks of protein. For human tissue synthesis, we need 11 essential amino acids, and there are a couple ways to get these. By far, the simplest way is to eat animal products, which are almost always or are always complete proteins. In most cases, plants offer an incomplete mix of amino acids, and so it requires a mix of certain types of plants, such as bean and corn, to provide a complete protein. There are exceptions to this, but usually in crops that are not available in the world's poorest countries. In a wealthy country, it's quite easy to find non-animal-based protein sources, but this remains a problem for many people in developing economies. And the other problem is that meat tends to be very expensive. So um, if income is a limiting factor in food consumption, then protein is almost certain to be a problem. Our bodies also need minerals and nutrients to survive. And here we take a look at just two of these. Vitamin A is a nutrient, and you can see its molecular structure here. This particular molecule is absorbed from food and used for some very specific physiological functions. This includes the formation and maintenance of skin, teeth, and soft tissues. Vitamin A also plays an important role in eye function. Vitamin A is present in some animal products and in a variety of vegetables, such as carrot, sweet potato, red pepper, and a handful of additional vegetables. Iron, on the other hand, is a required mineral. And the molecule that you see here is part of the hemoglobin molecule that is used to carry oxygen in the blood. The red color of your blood comes from the presence of iron. And you can see this structure in the molecule here. Without iron, your body would struggle to carry oxygen, a condition that is known as anemia. We find iron in red meat, fish, and in a number of vegetables. But one of the tricky things with iron is that it comes in several different forms, some of which are easier to take up in your body than others. For example, spinach has high iron, but it's in a form that is difficult to absorb unless it's in the presence of, an, of another vitamin called vitamin C. Some other plants or food supplies that give iron are beans, quinoa, broccoli, tofu, and dark chocolate, of all things. These all have good sources of iron, but one thing you should notice about this list is that it's made up of relatively expensive vegetables, or dark chocolate in this case that would be very difficult to come by in many parts of the world. And this is a reason that we tend to see iron as a problem in so many different countries around the world. In this graph, we see the prevalence of anemia in children from 1990 to 2016. As you can see, a lack of iron is a major issue globally, but it's especially a problem in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. But you even see it in the wealthier parts of the world. Part of the reason for this is that meat is the most common source of iron in diets, but it's also one of the most expensive types of food on the planet. Here we see the prevalence of vitamin A deficiency in children under the age of five. And as you can see, there are many countries where over half the population of children do not receive an adequate amount of vitamin A. If you think back to the list of vegetables or high end meat products that are needed to provide vitamin A, then you have part of the answer to why this is a problem globally. Economic constraints on food purchases or production create many of the issues that we see globally in nutrient deficiency. These types of patterns are also common for a range of other minerals and nutrients, including zinc, folate, and iodine. So how do you solve these problems? There are basically three approaches that can be used. The first is the consumption of a balanced diet, which basically means eating the right mix of food to meet your nutritional demands. The second is fortification, which is the addition of nutrients to some kind of common food. If you look on the backs of a cereal box, you'll see a bunch of minerals and vitamins that are not naturally part of the grains used in the cereal, but which are added to support human nutrition. And the last option is supplementation, which is basically taking external minerals or nutrients to address a deficiency, something like an iron supplement. In a practical sense, the way these problems are addressed typically is through agricultural diversification, such as the use of diverse multiple crop systems. In low income settings, many nutritional deficiencies can be addressed by increasing access to meat or animal products because these products tend to be so nutritionally um, complex and, and uh, dense. These deficiencies can also be addressed by purchasing fortified foods or supplements, but of course this requires higher income levels. And it's one of the major reasons that malnutrition is so strongly correlated with economic development around the world. 
To summarize, we need a lot of different things for human nutrition, and this includes calories from carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, plus specific nutrients and minerals. Globally, the excess consumption of calories is an increase in a very serious problem as obesity levels continue to rise. Despite this, uh, there are still many pockets of undernutrition or not enough calories, as well as many examples of malnutrition, which occurs when you don't have enough of a specific nutrient or mineral. These problems can be addressed through balanced diets, fortification, and suppl supplementation, but all of these approaches require either higher, higher income levels and a very strong agricultural production and distribution system. All of these things remain an issue in many parts of the world.